Queensland's command, etc. Police from all around Queensland have been mobilised, and thankfully, uh, we haven't had any reports of looting. It's just plain old Australian, isn't it, looting? Yeah. Well, uh, absolutely. There's uh, nothing I think that the community finds more abhorrent uh, than to prey on the vulnerable. And I think we've moved very quickly to put additional resources in the uh, communities that are affected. And, and thankfully, uh, thankfully, we have, have not had any reports of looting. Do you have any police you've called back from all those or um, uh, off to, to, to work? Yeah, this is such a large scale uh, event. All, um, all regions uh, have got their own logistic cells and they're redeploying staff constantly uh, through the state. Um, as Alistair mentioned earlier, um, that helps with managing fatigue and making sure uh, the resources are on the ground for what could be another two or three week event as we move through uh, uh, response and move into recovery. They say there's approximately about 4,000 people currently displaced by these floods. Do you have an actual official figure on registered evacuees? Look, uh, not here right at the moment, but we'll be able to provide that to you uh, after. We do keep uh, stats from local groups. Uh, uh, those uh, those uh, figures change constantly as people book into centres and uh, then check back out of centres, but we'll be able to provide that to you later on. Brett, what does it say about this emergency, this, this flooding situation, given that there hasn't been a loss of life in, in terms of how this is being managed as it goes on? You know, I think the emergency management uh, structure uh, in Queensland, which is really a model uh, based around escalation, works extremely well. but. What we're finding is that communities are extremely resilient. Uh, you know, uh, the model that shows the model that has communities addressing um, all disasters locally first, and then as they escalate and perhaps move out of their uh, control, move to a district and then a state level works extremely well. A state our size, with all the complexities it has uh, around floods and fires and all the other hazards that we manage, I think the model in place is proving to work very, very well. Uh, but more importantly, I think it places uh, control back at local communities. Often it's local communities who know best. Uh, people have lived there generationally and they have the ability really to, uh, to take care of themselves to a large degree. But importantly, uh, when it does escalate, uh, uh, we've got the resources at district and state level to assist them. And, and of course, uh, we can't forget the, uh, the federal government, the defence, uh, particularly the support they've provided with uh, aircraft is just invaluable. One, one of these is we really frustrated with lack of mobile phone coverage and trying to get the message out in communication. How have we found communicating uh, in the country? Look, we have had reports where there is some challenges and we're working through strategies there. Uh, this is probably a case where the technology uh, that has evolved to help us is now in some ways uh, hurting us uh, because there's so much uh, mobile data uh, that does make it a bit more challenging. Uh, what we have to do, I think, over time is educate uh, the public uh, that in times of uh, crisis, uh, just as we have to limit resources, it's sometimes prudent to limit uh, uh, communication so that essential services can get through. We're working through that. Um, there has been places that have lost comms, uh, places like uh, uh, Warabinda, for example, uh, have lost uh, communications, uh, have lost power at times. Uh, but thankfully the response has been rapid and, uh, and those matters being addressed, with, uh, addressed quickly. You used to mention the lack of mobile phone coverage being a problem as well. Just... Uh, I, I haven't heard that. The main issues uh, we've been dealing with is where there's overload on the system. It's New Year's Eve tonight. Yesterday you were mentioning that you know, it's important that resources aren't diverted away from the flood efforts. Is that a message really for people in these communities that are affected? No. I, look, I think it's for... for people who are celebrating New Year everywhere. Um, uh, you know, police resources uh, uh, naturally are also assigned to uh, managing the New Year's Eve celebrations, uh, uh, just as many police resources are, are being assigned to managing this very complex disaster. Uh, we're appealing to uh, the, the greater good, I guess, to, to say, please uh, keep this in mind as you celebrate New Year. Uh, have a great time. Um, we don't want to be the fun police, but we'd like to say to people, uh, enjoy your new year, but please uh, uh, behave responsibly uh, because uh, any, any uh, you know, incidents uh, that cause a police response more than likely will have an impact on how we respond to this disaster. So we'd like people to behave responsibly. Have a good time, but behave responsibly. Was there any scheduled 
a new celebration in Mindy Gully that's now been cancelled? My understanding is that there is uh, an annual uh, ball at Nindy Gully that has been cancelled. How critical is it, though, that you know, attention isn't diverted away from this flood, the people doing silly things, skylarking, obviously uh, across the state uh, places are licensed venues can stay open until 2am? Look, uh, as I said, it's extremely important, I think, and I think most Queenslanders uh, recognise what uh, we as a state are going through. I think it's just prudent and timely just to remind people to to have a good time, as I've said, but behave responsibly, uh, responsibly because uh, any incidents we do get called to, uh, and for that matter, other emergency services, uh, fire appliances and ambulance, uh, you know, we're having to divert them to calls for service, uh, you know, associated with New Year's Eve, more than likely will take them away from their very, very important work of responding to this disaster. And Brett, the Premier has said previously that the damage bill could run into several billions of dollars. Is the cost becoming any more clearer? Uh, certainly, not, not from a police perspective. We're very much focused on, on responding to this event. As flood waters uh, recede, um, obviously uh, the true cost of the, uh, the events be will become... Uh, it's something that could take several weeks, I guess. Uh, we're finding already that as uh, flood waters recede, uh, roads are damaged. Those roads have to be inspected, as do bridges. And so... Uh, the true cost uh, in terms of infrastructure won't be known for some time. Uh, uh, that'll take some time to really um, uh, calculate, I guess. Just quickly understand that Theodore, uh, the town of Theodore is meant to have flooding coming back up again. Uh, what's your message to those residents who are in Mara or Billawila? Yeah. Will they be able to get back within a week or that's looking unlikely now? Look, I think the status at Theodore will remain the same for some time. Uh, you're correct. Uh, uh, the waters did recede uh, from uh, the high that caused the evacuation, uh, but there's been an enormous amount of water uh, in that catchment area through the Dawson River catchment area. And uh, really our thoughts have got to go to the residents of Theodore. Uh, those waters are rising again and they're expected... The Dawson in Theodore is expected to return to its uh, previous high. Uh, so uh, uh, the evacuation remain in place there. Uh, those residents are in for a, uh, you know, quite a lengthy wait before they can move back uh, into their homes and assess the damage uh, that's been caused. So our thoughts go out to them. Uh, they've, uh, in effect, been hit twice by this flood. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, happy New Year. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see you next year. We'll see you next year. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Bruce is so...